your favorite fearless hero. Having recently watched Puss in Boots The Last Wish, I could not be happier to see the film do so well. I've been a fan of the franchise ever since the first movie came out on DVD back in 2011. There are many great things to say about this film. The art style is stunning, the themes of mortality, existential dread, and family are all handled surprisingly maturely. The characters are well written. There's an accurate depiction of an anxiety attack. Yet, one of the more notable things in the film was the variation in frame rate. There are many scenes where the frame rate is purposely lower. But why do the animators make this creative decision? What purpose does it serve both visually and storytelling wise? I think it boils down to two things, but before we get into that, we need to go over. While watching an animated film or TV show, you might have noticed that some look smoother or choppier than others. This is because animators can animate at different frame rates. Typically, animation can be done in ones, twos, threes, or fours, all of which correspond to how many frames are used per second. For the sake of this video, we'll be covering the first three. Animating on ones means there are 24 frames for every one second, which is the same as 24 frames per second. Animating on twos creates 12 frames for every one second, meaning that each frame is held for twice as long as animating on ones. Finally, animating on threes creates only 8 frames per second, meaning that each frame is held for 3 times as long. From this diagram, you can really notice the difference between animating on ones, twos, and threes. Animating on ones can make the animation feel smoother, while animating on threes can make it more choppy. But why do this? What even is the point of animating at different frame rates? Well, I believe there are two main reasons why the animators for Puss in Boots The Last Wish chose to do this. Now, for the first one, I'm gonna need to warm up a bit here, because we are going to be talking about... <laughs> Having different frame rates helps illustrate different kinds of movement and can have an impact on how it is perceived. Take a look at this scene when Puss is fighting the sleeping giant of Del Mar. Despite the movie being animated on mostly ones, or 24 frames per second, the majority of his movement as he's running through the buildings and across the rooftops is animated on twos. But why? This is done to emphasize fast-paced movement. It gives the effect that Puss is moving faster because there are fewer in-between frames, which sort of mimics how we see fast-moving objects in real life. This also allows us to see Puss more clearly. Since the frames are held for longer, it gives you more time to visually process them. When Puss dodges the bell, you can see that the background is animated on ones, while Puss is animated on twos and even threes. The background continues to move, while Puss doesn't. This allows his jump to feel much more impactful. If Puss was animated in 24 frames per second, his movement would lose that erraticness and feel a bit more like this. Hey, you wanna see something cool? Let's look at it this way. Here on my left, I have a comically large barrel. If I were to punch the barrel at 24 frames per second, it would look something like this. Now what would happen if I did the same thing but was animated on threes instead? This time, you can actually feel the weight of my punch. Notice how there are fewer in-between frames on the left. This allows my arm to look like it's moving faster. Another example is during the Baker's Dozen fight scene. Almost all the characters are animated on twos and threes when they are running and fighting each other. This makes the scene much more chaotic, illustrating how erratic and spontaneous all the characters are behaving. And you'll notice that during this scene, Jack Horner is animated on ones when aiming his crossbow, while all the other characters are animated on twos or threes. This is because Jack is being as steady as possible to not miss his shot. By animating him at a higher frame rate, it can capture Jack Horner's cautiousness as he aims for Puss. 
Overall, a lower frame rate can make it easier for the audience to visually process fast-paced motion, while also increasing the impact of the character's movements. But visual impact isn't the only kind of impact a lower frame rate can make. Emotion can also be enhanced through frame rate, such as when Death chases Puss out of the Crystal Cave. During this short moment, Puss is animated on mostly threes as he's running away. His movements are more jagged, like an animal in the wild running from a predator. The realization that he's not being chased by an ordinary bounty hunter, but by literal death itself, triggers his flight or fight response, to which Puss chooses flight. What's the matter? Lives flashing before your eyes? Pick it up. Pick it up. <sighs> the once fearless hero who was never touched by a blade suddenly, and quite literally, is at the brink of death. By animating Puss at a lower frame rate, it emphasizes his fear, making him feel smaller and weaker as the walls cave in and turn blood red. I know this next example wasn't from Puss and Boots The Last Wish, but a similar technique was also used in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This was during a chase scene where Miles was animated on twos, while Peter B. Parker was animated on ones. This was to illustrate how Miles was not as skilled as Peter B. Parker. Both scenes utilized lower frame rates to emphasize vulnerability. You know, we've been talking a lot about lower frame rates, so you might be thinking, Okay, well, what if I wanted to increase the frame rate? Animation is usually at 24 frames per second or less, so what if I made it, let's say, 60 frames per second? What's the impact of doing that? Will the animation look better? And my answer to that question is... Interpolation. I'm sure most of you know what it is, but in case you don't, here's a brief rundown. Interpolation, in this context, is the technique of generating new frames in between already existing frames using AI. Have you ever seen those 60fps MCU clips on YouTube? Yeah, those clips were originally 24 frames per second and were interpolated to 60. Even though this technology was originally designed for live action, there are thousands of interpolated edits for animation as well, like this interpolated fight scene between Puss and Death. This scene was originally 24 frames per second, but was then interpolated to 48. And notice how the movements feel kind of awkward and mistimed. This is because the AI doesn't understand how to properly time the in-between frames. It just kind of fills them in to fit the 40 FPS. And just take a look at some of these interpolated frames. Yeah, it's not the greatest, but that's not to say that all interpolation is bad. There are plenty of Puss in Boots edits out there that use interpolated footage, and some of them are actually kind of clean. I'm deaf. Straight up. Pick it. Ow! You got the funk. Gets me super, gets me drunk. I'll do anything that you want. Anything that you want. Boots and boys. What are you looking at? So, interpolation doesn't honestly look too bad for maybe a 15 second TikTok, but for an entire fight scene, let alone the whole movie, probably not the wisest decision. With all this in mind, it's safe to conclude that Puss in Boots The Last Wish is an incredibly well-made film, and the animators at DreamWorks did an amazing job of capturing such raw emotion, movement, and imagery. 
While animating at a lower frame rate is not new in animation, in fact it's been done in anime for quite a long time. It's relatively new in 3D animation, and with more studios branching out to more stylized animation, we could see a whole shift in the industry. New, innovative techniques in 3D animation are on the rise, and I cannot wait to see this new chapter unfold. And never forget, animation is not a genre. It is an excellent medium of storytelling and a beautiful art form for individual expression. Animation is cinema. Thanks for watching.